Hi there, my name is Sanjeev and I'm one of the founders of World Robotics League. Today I am going to talk about uh, one of the super important uh, components of your robot in any competition. Well actually not just competitions, even for just classroom teaching or at home learning. One of the single most important parts of your robots that impacts its performance is of course wheels, right? Which wheels you select can have a very significant impact on the performance of your robot. Uh, and when I say performance, uh, what I really mean is whether your robot moves as you intend it to. Quite often uh, in our classes, in our competitions, one of the biggest problems that we see uh, among participants uh, or students in the classroom is that their robots, they would, uh, they would place it perfectly, they would align it perfectly, they would point it perfectly and they would uh, ask the robot to like continue on, move on whether using joystick or whether using uh, an autonomous program and the robot would not go where they intended to. It would uh, deviate sometimes uh, very significantly like you really intend to go it here uh, except it moves 6 inches within, uh, within let's say a meter of distance or and in some other places it's the, deviance, uh, sorry, the deviation is not really all that much but still uh, a couple centimeters uh, or half a centimeter or even a tiny bit let's say half an inch or an inch that is sufficient for a robot that size to miss its mark and uh, not just that in fact uh, if a robot missed the mark consistently on one side let's say if you plan it to go over here and it ends up reaching over here again and again and again right uh, that is a consistent behavior so you can plan for it you can say hey uh, I am going to program so the robot goes a little bit to the right so uh, when it goes try to go this way it'll end up where i intend it to but in many cases the performance is not consistent even with regard to which direction the robot is going to uh, drift so sometimes it'll go straight sometimes it'll go this way sometimes it'll go this way which is the worst kind of uh, inconsistency because you cannot really plan for it you cannot really uh, make it make the robot work in any whichever way and it gets uh, frustrating for parents and extremely frustrating for students so what causes a uh, robot to move straight? Well, the answer is uh, primarily wheels. And what kind of wheels you should be using? So let's take a look at this one. Uh, I have a gamut of uh, wheels here. Uh, some of these wheels, like these are some of the most common wheels that are used among Lego and Vex. Uh, both, uh, why stop at once? We, we were thinking of doing this just on Lego, but then we thought, why not Vex as well? So uh, I have some Vex wheels and some Lego wheels, and let's take a look at these. So uh, if you look at this one, right, I mean, uh, it's a bit difficult to see but potentially you can see it there here uh, this wheel is a big tire it's a fat tire for something like a uh, recreational vehicle like it comes on a, a lego model for a recreational vehicle and on the face of it looks like it will have great traction but the reality is this wheel is not going to perform very well one because its uh, surface is very very uh, very uh, pitted like you know, it is really like uh, rv vehicles uh, and uh, in general this one drifts very very uh, badly the other thing to note is like you know if you can see this tire it is just made exactly like the uh, regular tires except except that there's a uh, flaw in the way it gets mounted so if you look at the tire I'm gonna turn it inside out a little bit and you can see over here like this wheel is completely hollow inside right uh, unlike vehicle wheels which have uh, threads inside them that is metal threads uh, that actually give structure to the, uh, to the wheel while it's mounted and also uh, rear vehicles actually have air pressure inside them so the wheel actually retains its shape really really well unless it's uh, going in a ditch or going on a stone in which case it deforms a little bit to give the uh, give a smooth uh, driving experience these guys you press them in slightly they start buckling right and when the robot is loaded uh, if a bunch of load is on one side then one side it's going to deform more and the other side it's going to deform less so this is in in fact a very terrible wheel uh, we would really not recommend even though sometimes students and kids get super excited thinking hey what an awesome wheel this is a wheel i want my robot because it's going to crush the other robots well you're not in a competition to crush other robots you're there to make sure your robot uh, runs true and straight and this wheel is not it then let's look at uh, these two actually these three wheels over here that come with the EV3 kit. Uh, it's a little bit harder to see but you can take a look. This is a tiny one. This is a slightly bigger version of the same thing and here is an even bigger version of the same thing. These wheels uh, even though they come with the LEGO education kit, uh, we're surprised that LEGO decides uh, or chooses to put these wheels in the, in the kit because they perform really uh, badly. We have seen in some teams actually using the tiniest wheels and these perform still somewhat okay but the bigger you go the harder they become to actually manage in fact the first thing is like you know they are hard to mount if you i don't know if it's possible to see or not but they don't go very well on the on the central portion this uh, solid portion on which the wheel is mounted 
uh, they just don't fit very well and the second they are squishy even you can see right they squish like when we press them just like the other wheels uh, if we take this out right these wheels are there's a there's a layer here and inside there there's there's nothing it's just a very very thin shim uh no, sorry thin layer and this collapses very easily these wheels are the worst kind of wheels that we have seen they give you the worst consistency sometimes the robot goes one way sometimes the other way they are just absolutely not worth putting on your robot unless you want your kids super frustrated so these three wheels over here just get rid of them we have seen like you know we have seen some teams do reasonably well with these uh, smaller wheels but uh one they still have the squishy factor uh and the second thing is these wheels are uh, like you know your robot is gonna go very very slowly with these wheels because since your wheels are so small uh, it will take tons of rotations of your motor for the robot to go even a small amount of distance what you want in a uh, competition robot or educational re robot that you want to perform well is uh, it should have decent size wheels so it can cover a bunch of distance in a uh, relatively fewer number of uh, turns of the motor and these wheels uh, will not do that uh, in past uh, in Lego world the wheels that we have shown so far are all Lego wheels this wheel over here is also a Lego wheel uh, I have seen it in some competition robots used to be seen in uh, slightly older competition robots and on the face of it, it looks again uh, pretty nice and sturdy and so on but the reality is even this one is kind of squishy I mean uh, it is squishy it doesn't perform very well uh, and on top of that I don't in particular like wheels that have the real bicycle like treads i don't know if you can see or not uh, these ones have like you know real bicycles have a little bit of rubber and then a dip and a little bit of a dip and then a little bit of rubber a little bit of dip and so on uh, all around the wheel that doesn't work very for competition robots and what you want here is a little bit of a uh, little bit of smooth area right right at the ridge and this one is not it uh, if you look at another lego wheel this wheel over here uh, let's take a look this wheel over here is a uh, and let's look at the tread right this tread actually looks like one of those 18 wheelers uh, uh, wheels uh, it is like smooth uh, so it is it, that way it is pretty good uh, uh, it has tons of traction uh, but it is also hollow and we haven't seen many teams using this one uh, in general performance using this one is not very great either but what we really want and this is something that actually surprises us that uh, Lego didn't get for a long while uh, this was one of the wheels that did not come in any of their competitive kits uh, you can see these are lime uh, they are also available in orange and a few other colors but the outside uh, rubber tread is absolutely rigid there is no give in it it is just one thin sheet of rubber that's completely wrapped around a very solid chassis uh, sorry not solid chassis the solid central portion and that just moves very very straight uh, this this is the wheel that is present in our uh, our book uh, this is the wheel that all the students in our schools use and this is the one that we really recommend the one downside to this wheel is that yes it moves very straight it will turn perfectly uh, you will have the least amount of errors that you're gonna hit with this particular wheel but it is still smaller than some of the larger wheels available so your robot is not gonna not going to be able to go that fast that is one of the big things and the second uh, there is very little clearance between the axle of this wheel you can see right this is where the axle actually goes uh, let's take a look and it's about this much of clearance so in some of the challenges in the competitions the robot has to cross a certain hurdle uh, your axle may uh, hit the hit the obstacle your uh, vehicle may just bottom out and not be able to uh, clear it very easily that's one of the things so about I would say 85 90 percent of the time uh, we love this wheel it works for pretty much everything for education for learning it works just amazingly well uh, we would not uh, really uh, say use any other wheel this wheel just works uh, this one is called ZNAP you can find it on Bricklink or uh, or Brickall uh, so that's one of these now uh, here are two other wheels that we saw this year this one and its bigger cousin over here these are wheels that came with the lego spike prime robot uh, we love these wheels uh, there's no other way for word for it we love these wheels because these are the exact same wheels that are used for even larger metal robots uh, there the rubber uh, I guess uh, the rubber tire on this thing is solid there is no give whatsoever it's like super solid it has a good grip uh, it's curved very nicely so that uh, even though it can give you a decent enough grip it's not going to become too much troublesome uh, when your robot attempts to turn so that is really, really good the other amazing thing about this one is if you look at any of these wheels, let's say even the green wheels in the center of this thing there is one axle uh, axle hole and your entire robot is attached to this wheel via one axle uh, when I say axle 
this here is a lego axle it is uh, if you look at from the cross section or you can look at uh, one if you have one at home it looks like a plus sign and it's really tiny yeah, so this tiny piece of plastic being driven by the motor is uh, taking the load for the entire robot and turning your wheels uh, what ends up happening uh, after a bit of uh, use of this axle is these axles actually start bending i have seen seen some that have been twisted very badly and i've also seen some where the robot wheel is not supported the weight of the robot starts bending this this thing right over here so the wheel will become like this and uh, you will have this kind of pattern where wheel is moving this way and your robot is uh, tilted a little bit so this doesn't necessarily work very well but in these ones the driving mechanism is still the axle like if we take a look at the other one the bigger one here the driving mechanism is still by the axle except if you look at this piece over here right there are four holes uh, one two three and four and you can use this to connect to the lego motors uh so you will have this wheel connecting to the lego motor at five points these four at the edges one two three and four these will uh, make this wheel grab onto the motor so that when the motor spins the entire wheel starts spinning very well and the center one uh, further gives it a little bit extra uh, strength uh, so these wheels in general will work very well with motors they're supported by a very large surface area of the motor and we expect that these will work very very well because on their because their profile is also similar to the well performing wheels in metal robots uh, we're not sure why it took lego such a long uh, period of time to release wheels like these but we're super happy that they do and not just that they actually release them in two separate variants one a small one and one a large one with a ton of clearance uh, we love these wheels uh, if you look at this like remember we had talked about uh, lego versus vex if you look at Vex, Vex actually by default in the ba in their box uh, gives a slightly smaller version of this wheel, but the rubber on this thing is solid. Like there is absolutely no give on this one. Vex knows that their robot need robots need to perform well in the classroom. They need to perform well in the competition. So their wheels are always created this way, where this is solid. You may think that hey, my real vehicle actually has air cushion and so on. Why shouldn't it uh, the same uh, concern be or same? Uh, pattern be repeated in my robot the answer is your robot is not going over uneven terrain it's not gonna get uh, bumped so it doesn't have to have shock absorbers uh, to uh, cushion the blow to the rest of the robot your robot is going on a very well defined surface it's flat for the most part uh, and where it needs to climb over things they are very very small um, obstacles so your robot is not gonna be getting any shocks so in general wheels like this uh, with vex uh, they work very well the other cool thing about the uh, Vex wheel is essentially there is a wheel like this which is just not present in the in the realm of Lego. You can take a look at it from the front and then you can take a look at it from the side. So what this wheel is, this wheel is known as a Omni wheel. Uh, what it means is, well, the wheel can actually spin this way, right? It can spin this way without any concern. It is a circular wheel, so it spins. Except that they have these tiny little rollers uh, mounted every, uh, every so often in a very pattern, in a well-defined pattern. So if the robot needs to move this way, like uh, perpendicular to the direction of the normal rotation of the wheel, the robot can still move. These kind of wheels are called Omni because they can literally allow your robot to move straight or turn in any direction with very little friction. That's about the wheels. Uh, the other portion of uh, the equation that I wanted to point out was some kids uh, and some participants really want to use treads. Uh, this is a rubber tread from Lego. You also get this in plastic variants and that you can snap together. Uh, but the problem with threads is these are some of the worst performing uh, moves, uh, some worst performing uh, means of locomotion, worst performing way for your robot to move on a uh, on a surface. In general, uh, almost nobody uses them. If you use them, uh, it's very unlikely that uh, your robot will be moving very consistently at all. So once we are done with this, uh, well, threads, uh, solid wheels uh, here, like this is a solid wheel and. Omni wheel, which can uh, move this uh, move in this direction as well as uh, sideways, and then a bunch of Lego wheels. Uh, now let's take a look at the axles. So Lego has these plastic axles, and as we said, right, uh, even though they work very reasonably for many of the mechanisms that Lego builds, but one they are not really built for uh, usage over and over and over. They just break down over time and our bend and so on we have had a lot of horror stories on how these wheels how these axles uh, fail over time and the kids didn't realize uh, on the other hand vex actually uses axles similar axles except that these axles are metal so they can take a ton of load like i cannot bend this axle with my hand unless I apply maybe a ton of pressure and even then maybe not and uh, these axles are driven by the motors they go inside their wheels and they perform just admirably we have never seen one of these axles uh, bending or in general uh, going like you know performing uh, 
badly during competitions or whether during classes. So uh, that is it for the uh, wheels. Like you know, there are a variety of wheels. Use the one that have firm uh, tires. Use the ones that have a large amount of connecting surface with the motor. Uh, make sure that you try and use axles that are uh, strong. Unfortunately, in the Lego world, you only have the plastic axles. So try and get wheels like these, which actually allow you multiple connections point, uh, multiple connection points to the uh, robot motor itself. And in case of Vex, uh, Vex also has plastic uh, axles. Please, please, please don't use plastic axles for your uh, for your wheels. Always use a metal axle. Uh, that's it for today. Next time, we'll uh, probably target a Spike Prime robot uh, from Lego. Uh, Alright, and see you next time around. Thank you.